Hi, I'm Jackie Thompson, author of Liquid Soap Making and Master Soap Maker. Today I want to show, share with you a little bit of the story, the history behind shave creams and shave preparations. Up until the mid-1800s, there were no shaving preparations. It was either soap or water, and in the Roman times they used oils. But in 1844, a guy by the name of Solomon Lloyd, he created the first shave cream. Now Solomon was not a wealthy man by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, he went to debtor's prison because he couldn't pay his bills. And in the meantime, his son Andrew married Amy Lloyd. And when Solomon got out of prison, he put Amy Lloyd to work making Euxesis. Okay, E-U-X-E-S-I-S, -E -S, a shaving preparation that he had that he had made, and he and he showed Amy the ropes on how to make it, and she took over the production of it. Well, Amy was a better daughter-in-law than and that Andrew was a son. Andrew was not an, an ambitious man, and at, and his father died an untimely death, and so Andrew moved the family and his siblings to another location and Amy started producing Euxesis. Okay, now it gets a little bit more interesting because they didn't get along and Andrew was rather abusive to his wife, but for what Andrew gave, I think Amy gave just as good. So even though Andrew, uh, Andrew Lloyd did hit his wife upon the face, refused to allow her to eat, and all kinds of manner of things that happened that way. He also accused Amy of kicking him in the stomach where he never recovered. So, it was a tit for tat, but Amy could not get free of Andrew Lloyd, even with the police coming and coming to their home numerous times. But when Andrew Lloyd started having an affair with the shopkeeper, that is when Amy Lloyd could get a divorce. So in the middle of the night, Amy had her friends and her shopkeepers around her help move all of the equipment to make the Euxesis to another location. And Amy continued production. Well, Andrew allowed that as long as he didn't have to cover any of Amy's debts. And in the meantime, Andrew had his mistress, the shopkeeper girl, was making Euxesis for him. So, unfortunately, or however you want to consider it, Andrew Lloyd passed away. And he left his estate to his mistress. And his mistress sold Euxesis to a wholesale merchant by the name of Ho Hovington. Okay, Hovington took that and wanted to buy Amy's as well, but Amy refused to sell. So he took her to court. But because her product was superior and she had the backing of friends and relatives that supported her and denigrated Andrew Lloyd and his work ethic and his, and his, and his overall personality, she won the case. And up until the 1900s, Euxesis was sold by Hovenden and Amy Lloyd as well. And in 1983, Caswell Massey trademarked the name Euxesis, but they, they let it lapse after only one year. But rumor does have it, and someone did say on posts over the internet that they bought Euxesis up until the 1990s from Caswell Massey. In the mid-1920s, I believe it was 1923, Barbasol came out with the first United States uh, brushless shave cream, which was also one of the first preparations for shaving. Uh, Barbasol, I'm not sure the history on how it was developed, but the interesting thing is, is the way they advertised it. They advertised Barbasol using powerful greats like Baby Ruth, and they also had Singing Sam that would sing on the radio, sing the jingles of being a Barbasol man. And in the magazines, they had the most for the time, and even, some, uh, even somewhat today, poses of women in scantily clad clothing 
uh, to show how good a Barbasol man felt with his woman. So it was really interesting, one of the most interesting advertising campaigns that came out to that day. Uh, and Barbasol continues today. In fact, Barbasol, uh, with their, I think it was their 100th anniversary, they came out with a 1919 Barbasol based on their original formula. The most interesting of the 20th century early preparations of shave cream, I feel, was Burma Shave. Burma Shave was cr created by Clinton O'Dell. Clinton O'Dell, uh, he was a lawyer and he was an insurance salesman, but he, uh, in that time, lawyers didn't make that much money. And his dad had made a liniment, okay? And the liniment, it took somebody that needed the liniment in order to use the liniment. So the Odell family kind of went hungry while they were trying to uh, sell the liniment uh, under the Burma Vita brand name. Uh, because Clinton Odell had a really, really bad illness that the doctor said that if he didn't get out of the business that he wasn't going to live. So he decided he'd do something less stressful and he started selling the liniment. And then he got a hold of a tube of Euxesis. We talked about Euxesis before, but what they said about it is it wasn't a very good product. It was sticky and it was hard to rub in. And so he got a hold of a person that he had helped uh, that was a chemist and the chemist said what do you need and he said I need a shaving preparation like this but better and so the chemist went to work and and after over 300 tries they went back to number 143 of the samples that they had tried and found that that one would work so it was a trial and error that many of us are familiar with when we're trying to develop a product, but what they found was that it took some waiting time for it to come into its own. So that's how Burma Shave was made. And it was made in about 1926, 28. I'm not sh quite sure the date off the top of my head. But the thing was, is they didn't have any money. They didn't have an advertising campaign, but they had to get it, get it advertised. So Odell's son, he said, uh, hey, listen, Dad, we've got some of these old boards out back. Let's paint signs and put them on the road. And so he said, ah, that wouldn't work. And his advertising campaign manager says, that won't work. But he said, let's do it anyway. So they did. And then all of a sudden, the sales started ringing all over the areas where the signs were put up. And they did all kinds of advertising gimmicks. Like they had one that said, 900 jars will get you to Mars. And so they had a guy said, I'm taking you up on the offer. And they replied back, yes, but you know there's no return trip. And so, so they said, well, but you said 900 jars to Mars, so here we go. And it was a grocer that had, had little green men on the roof of his store shooting out little pop guns uh, from Mars. And they said, we're going to Mars, bring your Burma shave jars. And they had a whole campaign going. And so the campaign manager said, you've got to come in here and see this. These guys are serious. They want a trip to Mars. So what they did was they found that there was a Mars Germany. And they filled, they sent the fa whole family to Mars Germany and they packed up jars of Burma shave for them to distribute abroad for, to help promote their brand. I hope you enjoyed my history of shave creams and most importantly, the history of brushless shave creams, which brings us to today Men are reaching back more than ever to the old-fashioned preparations because of ecology, because of uh, ease of use, 
because of all different, I mean, there's a myriad of reasons and some of it is just a hobby. But it's growing and it's growing in our industry and brushless shave creams is a different avenue than we have gone before besides the creams and the pucks and uh, all the other kinds of preparations. So I would love to share with you how, there's nothing on the market today, I'd love to share with you how I make it, but I am out of time for right now, but stay tuned, okay? We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.